Welcome to the show, From the Soapbox to the Stage. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. If you've ever dreamed of standing on a stage to inspire, educate, or motivate an audience, then you're going to want to stay tuned. I'll be interviewing top speakers and sharing tips on each episode for helping aspiring speakers, as well as those who have already stepped onto a stage, how to move from the public speaker to the professional speaker. Many people get opportunities to present at a group or speak at an event, but how many of those actually get invited back to do it again? Only those with the talent and professional business skills that event planners and organizers are looking for. That's what viewers will learn here as they hear from professional speakers who have been there and have done that. With me on the show today is Jim Bouchard, a martial arts black belt and entrepreneur. He's the author of the Amazon bestseller, Think Like a Black Belt, a book that takes you inside the mind of the black belt to develop confidence, courage, discipline, focus, and leadership for excellence in personal and professional life. Jim has been speaking to groups since 2007. Thanks so much for being here, Jim. Oh, it's good to see you again. Yeah. The, the thing that is really important is I want to start with is what is it you do? And then I'd like to take a step back to find out how did you get to where you are? Because I think a lot of people will be watching this and say, how can I become a professional speaker? How do I get to that point? And I think we learn from others who've taken the path. So yeah. tell us what you do now. So what I do and why I do it, I think, is important. It's important to anybody getting into the business. What I do is I teach people how to think like a black belt. I was telling your other guests the, the story about that. We were trying to come up with a brand. We were working on our second book, you know, what we were going to title it. We knew we had to shift. And my wife, Alex, who you know, she, uh, she came up with it. She just sat there one day. She said, why don't you just tell people that you teach them how to think like a, a black belt? That's what you do. And it stuck. And we tested it. It looked pretty good, and we went with it. There's a, there needs to be a why behind it, though. And the why is because discipline, focus, excellence, these traits are not optional in business, in life, or anywhere else. And the reason I'm emphasizing that, I think it's very, very important for some. A lot of people can do a lot of what's, but you have to understand why you're doing it. Because when you start to pitch yourself, you start to make, trying to make a living at it, right? The why is going to be where you're going to build your marketing from. That's going to be the essential part of it. So before we go any further. noisy, fantastic, but very loud world, right? Okay. If I want to concentrate on the task at hand, I've got to turn off all that noise and allow myself to be mind asking me, how do you become disciplined? Not being the nicey, nicey motivational guy, here's what I say. <laughs> yeah. Decide to do it. Pull up your pants, turn your hat around, and get to work. transform some minds to that idea that the whole idea behind discipline is just making a decision first then we can start to take the first step. The principles behind black belt mindset are universal. The application is unique to each individual. Exactly. I won't even go further. He said do the best you can. Right? That you can. You measure yourself against who? Yourself. How do we develop this mastery? How do we develop this willingness to learn? How do we develop this proficiency? How do we develop this excellence? More basic of practice, like a Nike, just to do it. <laughs> right. If we can get that process happening, we're asking questions of ourselves and of other people, then it's a constant activation process. If you can embrace that idea of constant self-perfection, you can enjoy that moment, you can access that moment at any time, what does that do to any process you're engaged in in your life? Whether it's life or business or anything else. You see? Just Chew on that for a second. Think about that. So perfection is not a destination. It's a never-ending process. Thank you. So that's a great clip. Um, Thanks. And, and what was the primary message you were giving them to the, at that, that event? 
you know, it, it always comes back to certain key words, and I, I usually start, well, early in the presentation, I like to ask the audience questions. Not everybody's comfortable doing that, but I, I like to do it. I like to ask them, you know, what words come to mind when they either see a black belt or they hear, because it's an iconic symbol, right? And once we start to establish those words, then we can work from there. And we mentioned a few of them just a few seconds ago. Discipline, focus, excellence, and this idea of perfection that I think we're going to touch on in a little while, so I, I'll, I'll kind of leave that on the table for now because uh, people have kind of some weird ideas about that. But uh, that's it, you know, to those, those key words and how to take these ideas and these concepts and make them work in your life, whether it's business or... So, yeah. so, so how did you get to mm -hmm. where you are? Because you've got an interesting story. I mean, you're not you're not been a, a resume time. Yeah. <laughs> what what what? How did you get into speaking? What yeah. made you do it? If whatever. And I know your story, but what, whatever you're willing to share. Well, it's you know it's it's part of the it's part of the adventure. I'm a two-time college dropout and a former drug addict. And at some point in that journey, it would take a while to to tell that, but at some point I realized I needed to make a change in my life, and I quit drugs, left that behind and then got into martial arts. Now, over that time, I got into martial arts more for the philosophy than I did for the physicality, although I enjoyed both. But the philosophy of the martial arts, again, discipline, the hard work, the, you know, the, the rewards for hard work, all this stuff really started to mean something. And then I started to translate that. Well, actually, students of mine who were business people started to say, hey, you know what, all that, all that oh, I won't use the word that they said, <laughs> stuff that you <laughs> talk about on, in the dojo, we're using it in business, we're using it in our, in our regular lives as well. So that was the first part of it. People started to ask me to come out and share this philosophy and share these ideas. Uh, at first, I probably sounded like the Nine Steps guy from uh, Little Miss Sunshine, right? <laughs> But over time, I learned how to craft it and how to hone it so people would, would buy into that message, buy into those ideas. And that's the important thing. I talk about ideas. I'm not a solutions guy. I'm not a, a, an opinion, well, somewhat opinionated, but you, really what I'm doing is introducing ideas, and then we talk about how to apply that in life. And I think that's important for people to understand when they're speaking, they, that purpose. Right? And, and what you revealed yeah. is it, you got it. You got it at some point that said that this is I'm making a mistake. I shouldn't be doing that. And you became oh, daily. aware. Daily. <laughs> you became aware of that. And so many people are out yeah. there. They mm -hmm. they don't have the awareness yet. Yeah. But at what point? And we only got a couple minutes left. At mm -hmm. what point? Um, and I also want to make sure that we show your uh, website. Uh, mm -hmm. What point did it become professional speaking? Yeah. Well, you know what? One of my uh, most treasured mentors and, and a dear dear friend, Larry Winget, who really helped me turn this business around. Uh, at one point he said to me, he said, Jim, you're a professional speaker, not a public speaker. And there's a huge difference there. You have to embrace the business side of it. And that's hard work. It it's like any other business, right? And a lot of it has to do with work, accepting that, that we're evolving and changing and wanting to do that, embrace the craft of it. I think too many people leave that aside. They think they have a good idea or they have some degree of talent and they leave it there. I'm never satisfied, right? I can't stand watching these videos. <laughs> and I wouldn't care if we shot one today, right? Yeah. Uh, that's game film. We go back and we try to polish it and try to improve it. So, yeah, you got to embrace that process. So when, uh, and when you went down the track of the professional mm -hmm. uh, speaker, um, and just a question, how yeah. long did you speak for free before you actually began to earn some money at this? Well, depending on, you know, what's going on, I might still speak for free once in a while. Shh. <laughs> 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 Has to be a good cause now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a good two or three years, even when I was starting to, to be paid mm -hmm. for it, I would still take a lot of, of pro bono gigs. Uh, I think that's important along the way. I think it's important to speak as much as possible, to you know, embrace every opportunity. If nothing else, it's experience, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is sometimes more valuable than the fee. And then it's a trade-off as to if you're going to an event mm -hmm. and you're not getting paid, you could be in your office developing more content yeah. or something. Yeah. You got to make sure it's, it's worth your while, right? Yeah, but you know what, the opportunity to speak and share ideas, I think most of the time, especially for people starting out, most of the time that's worth it, because that's the most important part of it, yeah. you know what I mean? You've got to get out there on the stage, that's where everything happens, that's where you make your mistakes, that's where you, you find your moments of joy, right? Mm -hmm. And hey, you don't get that sitting in the office. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, coming up, uh, we're going to take a quick break, but after the break, I want to ask you, what would you offer aspiring speakers? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, one or two tips, so what they yeah. should really concentrate mm -hmm. on now, even if they're still speaking or they're on the stage, what they should focus on. So we'll, be, we'll come right back, so sure. stay, stay there. Um, can you just decide one day to speak and go out and do it? 
Not quite. There is some work that has to be done, and Jim and I will share all that with you when we come back from our break, so stay with us.